Thing for me, please say.
church, uh, that God continue blessing them and touch his sister-in-law. Uh, also remember Ann Johnson, amen, tonight. Amen. Uh, she is, chemo is really taking her down. And uh, she said she just can't do chemo now. She's like, it's really bothering her. Uh, so let's pray to her that God will touch her. Amen. That God will touch her body. Remember Brother Danny Patrick tonight. Uh, he starts a revival at West Lane Church here in Glasgow. He, uh, uh, he's got to go have some back surgery done and uh, pray that God will touch him. Amen. Use him in this revival. Amen. Give him the strength to go. Amen. Uh, 
pray for uh, each and every one. Amen. That's here tonight. Remember, remember uh, our churches around this community and around Scottsville and around Bowling Green, uh, Brother Kevin Hinton's church. Remember him and Sister Wendy. Amen. Remember Brother Roger Brown and Sister Starla. Amen. In your prayers. Uh, also remember Sister Frances's mama. Amen. Continue praying for her, Brother Darrell and Little Artie. Amen. They they uh, they watch our church service and Sister Carly Pope and her family. Uh, also remember uh, uh, Sister Marjorie Burkett and her family, Sister Judy McCarty and her family, Sister Lynn and her family. Amen. We really appreciate them. Amen. They, 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 I tell them they're our California church. Amen. And uh, they they watch us. Amen. They took us in. Remember our uh, past the preacher over there in uh, Kenya. Amen. Uh, remember them. Amen. He will pray for his family. Uh, so remember them. Also pray for Betsy. Uh, amen. On her TikTok. Amen. She wants to get closer to the Lord. Amen. Pray for her family. Uh, also remember uh, uh, Sister Barbara Aldrich's uh, sister. Uh, I had her, but I, I think that they might have taken her. I'm not sure, but take her leg off. But I'm praying that God don't. Amen. She has to don't have to have that done. But they got she's got a place on her foot that's really really messed up. Amen. When you got sugar diabetes, it's, it's rough. Amen. So, uh, pray for her tonight. I mean, anybody else got a prayer request? Amen. Somebody else? Somebody else. Remember Sharon Turner also tonight. Amen. Your prayers. Uh, remember uh, Brother Jackie Stamps tonight. Amen. That God will touch his eyes and heal his eyes. Amen. He, he's getting to where he can't probably see good. His back's bothering him a lot. Amen. So I should remember him tonight. Uh, also remember our services coming up Sunday. Past appreciation and uh, our anniversary service. I just look at it in our anniversary service. I, you know, I, I'm, I go to see somebody get blessed, amen, and somebody get saved, amen. But, but remember our service, pray for Brother Keith Patrick that God would just give him a message for the church, amen. And uh, I get to sit back and enjoy and eat the word that he can. And, uh, but remember him. Also remember uh, Brother Chris Calvert uh, over there in Scottsville at Gloryland Church. Brother Timmy and Sister Tammy goes. Amen. Remember them 
brother Chris has really been stressed out a lot, amen, uh, about his job and stuff. And then, uh, brother Timmy said just remember him in prayer, so remember him in prayer tonight. Uh, brother Jimmy Wilson is supposed to be preaching over a Tuesday night. So if Brother Jimmy wants prayer, remember him in prayer also, amen. Somebody else. Cookie Simmons tonight in your prayers. Amen. Uh, remember uh, Sister Jackie. Amen. I hope she gets to make it next Sunday. Amen to the Pastor Appreciation. Amen. She's part of the church. Amen. We got to get her back down here. We got to pray hard. Amen. She needs to be back here. Amen. So, uh, What's up there? Our fine places to go to church that preaches the truth. Amen. So, uh, but pray, pray that God uh, just move on her. Amen. She could come be with us in service. Amen. Sunday. Uh, also remember, uh, brother, uh, Sister Nora's baby brother Brad. Uh, he watched our service this morning. Then shared the video. Amen. And uh, so uh, remember that. Amen. Somebody else this tonight. Remember Tim McClellan and Ed Dawson, they're both the church right Amen. Somebody else. Remember Sister Kathy and her family and kids and Sister Alma and remember the ones that came and then get a while and they all come back again. Yes, amen. Remember that. Pray for uh, Sister Missy's got to go. I think they want to, uh, her to have a pacemaker. Amen. So uh, pray for her that God will just touch her. She won't have to have that. Amen. Amen. Uh, so uh, remember that. Like Sister Bonnie said, remember Harvey Simmons. Amen. He had to have surgery, mer I guess emergency surgery, amen, uh, so he's in the hospital, so remember him, amen, God will touch him, amen, I love to see him safe, most of all, amen, so remember that, anybody else before we pray, remember the laws, amen, there's a lot of laws, pray for our upcoming events that we're working on, hopefully we'll find out something tomorrow. Amen. We'll be able to let everybody else know. Amen. But just pray. Amen. God make a way where there seems to be no way. He's a way maker. Amen. Amen. So uh, just be praying for that. Amen. Let's smoke request by the raising of his hands. How many's going to get in tonight? How many's going to have church tonight? Get your mind on God. Amen. If we get our mind on God, we can have a good service tonight. Amen. We come pray to you, see to pray to y'all.
going to help this floor make it way on up. Page nine, I feel like traveling on.
couldn't feel it, I wouldn't want it. Amen. <coughs> amen. If I couldn't feel the anointing of God, Sister Teresa, amen, I wouldn't want it. Amen. I want to know what I can feel. Amen. There's a song out saying, Do you know how it feels? You know something is missing. And a still small voice. You just keep listening. Do you know how it feels to be troubled inside? Amen. Do you know how it feels to feel the anointing of God? The presence of the Lord? Amen. When I wake up, I feel the presence of God. Sister Teresa, it just seems like, I don't know what it is, but on Saturday morning, Saturday morning when I wake up, I just feel the presence of God. Amen. I just feel the anointing of God. Thirsty. I wake up and I want to go up to thank the Lord all day. Lord, what are we going to do Thursday night? I hope we don't have it church tonight. Lord, what are you going to do tonight? Amen. I'm sitting there on the the recliner when we got back from eating lunch and I was sitting there and I was like, Lord, what are we going to do tonight? God, what are you going to do for us tonight? you got something planned for us tonight. God, what are you going to do? Amen. And you know what? The Bible said your ways are not my ways. And my ways are not your ways. Amen. So we, we can't be what we want to be, but we got to be what God wants us to be. Amen. As long as we follow God, we'll be all right. Amen. And I thank the Lord tonight. Amen. For his Present. Amen. Uh, pray for those that came and visited last Sunday that God will send them back. Amen. You know, the old devil likes to throw cobs in there every once in a while, but God is bigger than that devil. Amen. Uh, he, can, yeah. he, he can break. See, God was showing, amen, them the anointing of God. God was showing them what he could do. Amen. Right. And the old devil wants to throw a cog in there. Amen. If you ever rode a bicycle and somebody throw a stick in your spokes, what happens? You're going to flip. Amen. You're going to wreck. Amen. Have you ever tried to jump something and you forgot to tighten the nuts up on the front wheel and you start to jump and the wheel comes off? Guess what happens? You wreck. Amen. I was, I was sitting thinking today, amen, I was sitting there reading the Bible there in Luke's Gospel. Amen. And, and you know what? He's the good shepherd. Amen. He is the good shepherd. Amen. And he's not going to let his sheep wander off. Amen. He said he'd leave the 99 and he'd go after that one that went astray. Amen. Ain't you glad that he left the 99 and went after you, Sister Bonnie? Amen. Pulled you out. Even today, amen, uh, I got to talk with the, the guy at the Mexican restaurant today and he told me to really preach hard on Michael. He really needed it. <laughs> Amen. But he remembers how Michael used to be. And he remembers how Bonnie used to be. You know how Bonnie used to come in there and she'd have a shirt way down and she'd have shorts on and stuff. He said, I can see a difference. Amen. Bonnie's saying, he said, I can see a difference in you. A difference. There'll be a change. Amen. Amen. There'll be a change. And that's what people are looking for is to see a difference. Amen. Amen. And I'd love to see them come to the church. Yeah. Amen. Hey, listen. There's not a racist bone in my body. Amen. They're welcome here at this church. Amen. This is God's house. Amen. Everybody's welcome. Amen. To come on in in the presence of the Lord. Amen. All right. I'm going to ask uh, Cassie to sing for us tonight. She didn't sing this morning. We let her get back this morning, but we're going to have her sing tonight. Uh, also, we're going to sing that song, City Built from Four Coats, for the lady on TikTok. Uh, uh, there's somebody else again there. Amen. That needs to hear that song. You know, there's another lady that gets on TikTok that likes that song, amen. There is a city built for poor folks, amen.
standing back here. And I felt something rushing. I felt the Holy Ghost. Brother Wayne, how can Jesus be a father when he ain't got a son? Right, right. Amen. That just hit me. How can he be a father when he ain't got no son? Right. Amen. Nowhere in that Bible do you read that Jesus got married and that Jesus had a kid. Yeah. Right. So he can't be a father because he ain't got no son. Right. Oh, the Holy Ghost is good, ain't he? Oh, yeah. Amen. God is the father. Jesus is the Son. And His big brother is the Holy Ghost. Amen? My goodness, ain't it good that God can reveal things to you? Man, that right there just, that would preach. Amen? That would preach. Oh, you'd make a lot of people mad. But how can you be a father when you ain't got no son? Come on. Bill. A lot of people say, well, Brother Miller, you don't read the Bible right. Well, I do read the Bible, and I know what the Bible says. Amen. Amen. The Bible said that we are God's children. Amen. We are God's children. Amen. If you're bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, you were grafted in, amen, as a Jew, amen, you were grafted in as one of God's chosen children, amen, but listen, you think about it, how can he be a father when he ain't got no son, or a daughter, amen, he ain't got no kids, he didn't get married, the Bible don't say that Jesus, oh, there's people out there telling you that he married Mary Magdalene because she come and washed his feet with her tears. And she opened up the alabaster box and she anointed his feet. And he knew that she was a prostitute. He knew she was a, a hooker, in other words. And I thought, buddy, you better get back in that Bible. You better read it again. Amen. He was in Peter's house and he said, uh, Peter, you what, what? What's she doing? What, what? He said, she ain't ceased to quit washing my feet. You ain't even offered to wash my feet. Amen. Here I'm in your house. You ain't even offered. Here she came off the street. And she's been down here and she's cried. And she's washed my feet with the tears from her eyes. And she dried them with her hair. The word of God. The word. Amen. And when I heard that back here, oh man. Holy Ghost hit me from the top of my head to my feet. Amen. He, he can't be a father because he ain't got no son. Right, the creator that created us in their image. Amen. He's got a son. Right, and the Holy Ghost came and dwelt among men. Right, right. What did it do? It entered into Mary and told Mary she was going to have a child and his name was going to be called Emmanuel. Amen. God with us. Amen. God had to have a, a our ultimate sacrifice, Brother Wayne. He had to have somebody else than the turtle doves and he had to have somebody else than the bullock. Amen. He, he said, I'm getting tired of these animals being slaughtered. I need somebody that can take their place. Amen. And he said, I, I'm going to have me a son. And I'm going to pick me a woman out that's a virgin. Because did you know a lot of them, if you read in the Bible, a lot of them were street walkers. And read the Psalms of Solomon. Her husband went on a journey. What did she do? She went out on the street corner and wanted to try to find somebody. Come on. That's the word of God. The Bible said she even decorated her bed with flowers. Put flowers on her bed. She put petals down in the floor. She even put perfume upon her bed because she wanted to entice somebody because the husband was gone on a journey, so she went out looking for somebody. Hmm. We'll talk about Brother Bill. It's in the Bible. Read the Bible. It's in the Word of God. Amen. God said, Amen. He looked at him. 
Brother Michael, and he told him, Amen, you look like Jezebel's. Amen. You decorate up, you paint yourselves up. Amen. You adorn yourself. See, that's what the street walkers used to do. Amen. They would adorn themselves. They would dress themselves up and go out on the street to prostitute themselves out. Well, Brother Miller, I didn't know that was in the Bible. Well, you need to read the Bible. You need to read the Bible. It's in there. Amen. What do the girls do today? They go to Hollywood. They go out to California. What do they go to California for? Because they want to go out there and, and try to look, try to get big. And you know what they do? For, you know what they find themselves doing? They're on a street corner. A pimp's got them out there pimping them out, and they're decking them up, dressing them up like hookers. Amen. So people will look at them and tie them and pull them in. Amen. Could he want with someone like me? Empty and broken down on my knees. But through my sorrow, guilt, and shame. Amen. Love life. 
like rain came down on me. You ain't kidding, I ain't sung this song in a long time. Ain't nobody come to me long ago. Shackle by a shackled by heavy burden. Amen. Right. Brother Gary, you were shackled by some heavy burdens, but God came along and loosened them up. Amen. Right. Took them burdens away right. from you. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Oh, 
verse 16 says, Verse 16 says, For Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus because he said, Would not spend that time in Asia, for he hasted, if it were possible, for him to be at Jerusalem the right. day of Pentecost. Right. And from Alicius he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, Ye know from the day, first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I had been with you at at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations which we fell, befell me by laying in wait of the Jews. And now, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, right. but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews. Also and also to the Greeks, repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save the Holy Ghost, witness in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I myself dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And now behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I am not shunned to declare unto you all the counsels of God. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers to feed right. the church of God, which he have purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Yeah. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn right. everyone night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I Amen. command you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or pearl. Yea, you yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. I have showed you all these things. How that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had thus spoken, he knelt down and prayed with them all. And they all wept sorrow and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, sorrowing much, most of all, for the words which he spake, and they should see the face no more. And they accomplished him unto the shield. Acts 21 and 13 and 14 says, then Paul answered, What mean ye to weep and to break my heart? For I am ready not to bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem at the name of the Lord Jesus. And when he would not be persuaded, he ceased saying, The will of the Lord be done. 2 Timothy, he says here in 4, verses 6 through 8, he says, for I am now ready to offer in the time of departure in the hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Right. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but also, but to all them also that love is a king. First Timothy 6, verses 12 and 19 says, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Verse 19, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on to eternal life. Verse Corinthians 1, 9 
9 says, verse 23 through 27 says, And this do I for the gospel, and this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partakers thereof with you. Know you not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that you may attain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is tempered in all things. Now they do it to obtain corruptible right. crown, but we in a corruptible crown. I therefore so run, not as uncertainty, so fight I, not as one that beat the air. But I keep under my body and brain into subjection, lest that by any means, my when I have preached up to others, I myself shall be a castaway. Acts 20 and 24 says, Verse 22, rather, it says, Now behold, I go bound in the Spirit of Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save the Holy Ghost, witness in city, every city, saying the bonds and the afflictions that bind me. But now of this thing move me, none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received the Lord to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Right. If I had a thought tonight, it would be finish the race with joy, church. Finish it with grace. Don't let the devil get you down. Don't let him stop you. No matter what he throws at you, whether it be at home with a spouse, whether it be with our children, or whether it be somebody in the family, he finishes his race with joy, church. Don't let nothing hit you. Don't let the world and the cares of the world get a hold of you and shackle you down. Say, God, I'm free. That one, I'm free. I'm free. I'm finishing my race with joy. The finish line is just ahead. I'm going to cross this thing. And when I cross over that finish line, you oh, my, my, my. You may begin to shout. You may begin to speak in tongues. No more fight for sure. How do you going to take off running? Oh, my fight. The race with joy and grace here in the dark. You won't have to put up with the devil anymore. Well, glory. He said, finish the race with joy. Finish it with joy. Don't let nothing get you down. Don't let nothing stop you.
Says this road I'm on is straight and narrow, but it leads to a better home. It was laid by Christ one day at Calvary, when He suffered all alone. The road may lead over many high mountains and valleys dark and low, but I walk each day in sweet assurance, and I'm safely reached my home. And arise, there's joy and gladness, and rest for my weary soul. Ahead, there's peace and contentment. Everybody will be happy and whole. Home. I'll be at home with Jesus where tears will never shed. The world in this road gets rough and rocky. Still I know what lies ahead. On this road I get so weary and often my feet would stray. But a gentle hand as Brother David preached about this morning still leads me on my way and helps me find the way. As I climb each hill and course every valley, my hands high and his hand I'm daily lead. I won't look back. Gonna keep on walking. For I know what lies ahead. Too many times they want to look at the problem. They want to look back instead of looking forward. Don't worry about what's behind it. Worry about what's in front of you and what you're going to face when you get there. Because God's going to be there before you. Even get there, no matter how big your problem may be. Walk through that problem with joy. Walk through that joy. My, 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 with gladness, walk through and pray, filled of the Spirit, saying, God, I don't know how I'm going to get through this day, but I know one thing for sure, you're going to get me through it. Amen. 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 My, my, my. He wanted to finish it with joy. See, finish means he ended it. He was ready to end his journey. He was ready to cross over. He was ready to complete that thing. But oh, if you dig a little farther into the finish thing, it says crown. Oh, he was waiting for that crown. Because once we get across that finish line, church, and we finished it with joy, they're going to have a celebration ceremony where we're all going to receive a crown that no one else can wear but yours. And yours only it ain't going to be a size that fits all, buddy. Your head is going to be a crown just made for you. No count what might be on or what stone may be on. But we all going to get a crown when we finish that. Our course here, keep running the race, staying hooked up, tied up, tangled up with Jesus, and keep that joy stirred up inside of you. No matter how many times you may get down, you may feel like no one loves you, no one cares for you. Honey, but let the, me tell you tonight, that's one that will always love you. Amen. And his name is Jesus. Amen. And he'll give you that joy. Paul said, say when we cross that line, we're going to be done, Brother Gary. We're going to be done. Yeah, Some of you might want to go see Mama. You might want to go see Daddy. And Grandpa, brother, or sister, or Grandma. That's all fine and dandy. But we ought to be excited to see Jesus. Amen. If they're waiting there for you, praise be unto God. That they're going to be there and they just say, hey, I love y'all. I'll, I'll, I'll meet with y'all in a little while. I just want to fall down at the Master's feet tonight and tell today and tell him I'm thankful that he had mercy upon me and that he gave me that joy, that overflow, that led me to drink out of that well that never run dry. When my joy got a little down, I went back to the well and I got another dip. I got me a different pool and began to drink of that joy, unspeakable and full of glory. And then I got my strength back and then I was able to march on. I was able sometimes I had to crawl back in the game. I might have to roll a little bit. I may get down on my knees and begin to say, God, I can't go no further. But he said, just stay there. Your help's on the way. Don't let the devil have your joy. Don't let him steal it. And don't you dare give it to him. Because I've got something for you that's waiting that I can't even even remind that I can't stop talking about that joy that's unspeakable. We've got to finish this race with joy. 
race with you are. He said, not like this, you ain't. Not like this. I said, okay. And the devil will put things in your mind. Yep. Help the Lord. Well, Michael, you know, we got to be like that little kid song. And he sang. I got the joy, joy, joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. You know, I just got to thinking, I got to thinking and singing today a little bit of a little different song. And I think, Lord, I got it in my heart. I got it in my feet. I got it in my hands. I got it all over me. Amen. I said, Lord, I want that joy more than I do anything. But most of all, Lord, I want people to look beyond me, Lord. And I want them to see who it was that gave me that joy. That's unspeakable and full of glory. I want them to see you and to look past this old fleshly body because I'm not here to entertain nobody tonight. I'm not here to tickle nobody's ears. I'm here to tell you that we've got to walk a straight, narrow path and we expect to, expect to finish this race with joy. You know, a, a lot of people don't believe in, in a straight, narrow path, but the Bible plainly tells us that in order to get this joy, we've got to walk that straight, narrow path. Too many times we want to go to the right. We want to go to the left. We don't want to finish the race. You know what uh, I was thinking about in school? How uh, how in PE there when I was in high school, we had to run the track and how we ran around it. And I was teamed up with this other, these other kids and me being a fat old boy, they was all running pretty fast. I mean, they, we was leading and they my time come around to me. I was running just as hard as I could and I got the hurt in my side and I, and I said, Lord, I thought, man, I can't go and I kept on and then I began to slow down and I kept on, I kept on, I kept on even though sometimes we may hurt, we may ache, we may have this coming against us, but our friends carried us down. I finished that race. I may not finish it. We may not want it. I didn't care whether we win it. I just wanted to finish that thing and get it over with and get a good grade and get out of that class just as best as I could. Sometimes you and I need to finish this race the best way that we can, serving the Lord with all, all of our best ability we can, saying, God, what I don't understand, and like me, that I will understand, and I want this joy to finish this race. I want to run this race with joy. I don't want nothing to hinder me. I don't want nothing tearing me down. I don't care who it is. I don't care what it is. If the government try to tear me down, they ain't going to tear me down. God, you're in control of this thing. You're going to take care of everything that's coming against your people. You're going to take care of everything that's coming against your church tonight. Amen. Let's sing a song, Why Should I Wear Why Should I Fear why should we? We shouldn't. We shouldn't. This thing's winding down. Things rounding up. Wiping it, wrapping up. Right. We fix to leave. Yep. I don't know when. I don't know how. But we're going to leave. Space of time. In a matter of time. We're going to leave. You know, a lot of people, I seen something the other day, or might have been today, I seen somebody on Facebook, some friends of ours, they put on there and said, I'm going to buy my break plot right here before so my family won't have to go through that. And I thought, well, that's all good and dandy. But before you go through all that process of being planted there, lady, you ought to talk to the man that created you and this life that you're living, that you think everything's all right, you need to go back and get you some joy, get you a cup full of that joy and stuff and other stuff that you're drinking that you think is joy. You say, oh, you're milling in that person's life. No, I'm telling you, a lot of people think they got the true joy and they ain't got nothing. Honey, they're drinking. My, my, my. Yeah. They're drinking that old sulfur water thing and they got that... And what they need to do is, you know how they treat that soft water, Brother Gary? Yeah. They get some uh, 
chlorine tablets and put it in there and they didn't take care of it, no soap or water for two or three months there. You know, I, and a lot of them people need to come back to an altar somewhere down on their knees and get that chlorine tab tablet that's called Jesus Christ and he'll clean them up and it'll last a whole lot longer than one or three months. But a lot of them don't want to do it. They just want to get a little feel good shaking around and say, oh, I got it. I'm ready to go. And next morning they're out doing the same old thing that they were doing again. They're drinking from that soft, soft water. Amen. They ain't going to finish this race with joy. Or not. It's sad to say there's a lot of people in the churches today that think they're going to finish the race with joy. Right. They get up and go every Sunday morning. Every midweek service. Thinking yeah, everything's all right, that they're going to finish the race with joy, Brother Michael. Yeah. But they ain't got it. They ain't got the true thing. They ain't got the true salvation. They, they think they know Jesus when truly deep down inside of them they don't know him. They think they've got the right, my, my, my. They think they've got a right hold of the right blood. They think they, mm, what they need to do, they, i tell you what they got. They got some of that man-made plasma, plasma that they give people now instead of giving them the real blood that they used to give them back years ago. You say, oh, you made it. No, I'm telling you that there's a genuine blood, but a lot of the people nowadays in the church world, Brother Gary, they're taking that artificial thing that they're taking this blood and it's going to give them strength to fight against the devil when it ain't going to give them jack squat to do anything but to cause them to die and go to hell. They ain't going to finish the race with joy. They ain't going to stay in this thing behind because of the least little old hiccup that comes comes their way, they're going to be back out because they got an artificial on my my blood transfusion where they fell down on their knees and cried out, Abba, Father, forgive me of my sins. They would have got the genuine thing and it wouldn't have been real Coca-Cola. It would have been the real blood of Jesus Christ that have washed them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet and they'd had that joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. Amen. Tonight, I want you to ask yourself a question. Are you running this race? And are you going to finish it with joy? Are you going to finish it with joy? Yep, I'm fixing to sit down. Somebody needs to make up a mind tonight whether they're going to finish this thing with joy or whether they're going to put on a show. Whether they're going to put on a show and make the preachers and the deacons and the lay members, I don't care where you are. You may be on Facebook, you may be on TikTok, you may be on Big O, you may be on YouTube. Hey, you better line up, you better get the true salvation in your life, and you better walk with joy in order to finish this race yes, and to Lord. finish it with joy because there's a lot of people that's going to finish a race, this same race that we're running. Hey, death was calling for each and every one of us, and when we get to the finish line, I believe, Brother Gary, there's going to be two standing there. They're going to see Jesus, and he's going to say, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And then the devil's going to lead him up to hell with him. Honey, I don't want him standing there when I cross over that finish line. I want Jesus standing there saying, Come on in, now, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few days. I'm going to make you ruler over me. Whether he makes me ruler over any, I don't care. All I want to do is get through the gate and be there forevermore. And to finish his race with joy. There's a lot of people partying it up, Brother Gary, having a good old time. Thinking, I've got it made. I've got it made. I've got everything on board. Fleshly wise, yes, they do. But spiritual wise, Brother Gary, they don't have nothing. They don't have the, what they really need. When the tempter comes against them, they throw it all in. They will say, you're not doing no good. Your wife's left you. Your husband's left you. Why don't you overdose on these drugs? Well, if he comes against the church people that are rooted and grounded and the Lord has been blood bought by the true, genuine blood of Jesus Christ, they, when he comes, he'll put them, they'll put him under their feet, they'll rebuke him, and he'll have to flee in the name of Jesus and say, devil, I ain't got time for you. Get behind me, Satan. Not today, Satan, because I'm running my race and I'm going to finish it with joy and where it's unspeakable and full of glory where God is, where my Savior is, where the Holy Ghost is, the one that gives me the strength 
me in the name of Jesus. And you've got to plead. No. Like well, this. Okay, devil, you sit down beside me. Sit down beside me. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Somebody go get a piece of paper and write Joey on it. Write it real big, but I can see it. Saying, I'm going to take your joy. I'm going to take your joy today. You've got too much coming against you. You're at your last wits. You're weak. You're weak. And you think about it. You think about just throwing in the towel. You think about just saying, I'm going to quit today. I'm just going to quit and walk away. I'm going to lay my Bible down. I'm going to quit my singing. I'm going to quit my testifying. I'm going to quit going to church. I'm going to quit being a pastor. I'm going to quit being an assistant pastor. I'm going to get my deaconship up, my, uh, my bishop up, my bishopship up. Yeah, Lord. Being a treasure, being a piano player. Telling you some things, putting things in your mind, getting you frustrated. I know you've been frustrated. I know, Michael, that you have thought about quitting. I know, Michael, you thought about divorcing body and walking away and going back and doing your old things that you used to do, going back to your old lifestyle. So why don't you just tell me that joy? I'm here tonight trying to steal your joy. Leave it up there. Leave it up there. I'm trying to make a point. Down in my heart, down in my heart, down in my heart, I got the joy, 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 down in my heart, down in my heart to stay, and I'm so happy, so very happy. Oh, man. 
just want to give him praise and thanks for everything he's done for me, for the way I feel. I just feel so much better, like a big weight has been lifted off me, and I just have so much joy in my heart. Right. And I just thank the Lord for that. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Somebody else. Somebody else. Somebody else. six years. Amen. God is good. Amen. And we can't, we can't out 
outdo God. I don't care how much we try. I don't care how much we run from Him. You got to always have to come back to where God started you at. Amen. You have to come back to the fold. Amen. The sheep wander. Jesus said, I'm just going to leave them and I'm going to go after them. I'm going to find them. I'm going to bring them back. Amen. David, when his sheep got took out of the bow, he went after them. He didn't leave them laying. Amen. And at night, he would lay his body down over the, over the sheep fold, over the shepherds. He would lay his body down over that so the sheep couldn't get out at night. And no, nothing could come in. But then one night a bear slipped in and got one of the little lambs and took off with it. David went after that bear. What did he do? He slew that bear by its beard. Then a lion came in and took one of them and took off with it. What did David do? He went and he left the rest of them went after that little lamb that went astray that was took off by a beast. And the Bible said he slew that lion by the beard. Amen? He was a little old ruddy boy. But he was a shepherd. And a shepherd watches out after their flock. They watch out after their sheep. Amen. Somebody else. Sister Darling up there singing. I said, Lord's getting all over. I can tell by her voice. I can tell the change. Amen. Hey, listen. God's doing it. We're not. Amen. God's, God's doing miracles. He's doing wonders. Amen. But just remember the lady that I told you all about. Amen. Uh, Rebecca Crane. The Rydells. Uh, I know she's probably hurting real bad with her, her both of her elbows broke, and she's in she's in two planes like this. She can't even move. Amen. So remember that. How many is excited about what God's doing? Amen. How many is excited about what God's going to do for the church? Yes. Oh, yeah. Amen. 
Bill. We'll find out tomorrow. Hopefully we find out tomorrow. We'll get back with everybody and let everybody know what me and Brother Wayne's been doing. Amen. Uh, but uh, we got something up our sleeve, y'all. Y'all can't see it because faith is something hope for the evidence things not seen. Amen. Got y'all on that one, didn't I? <laughs> Amen. Uh, be praying. Be praying for uh, Sister Darlene's daughter, Misty. Amen. She's asked for prayer. Amen. So uh, remember her that God will touch her body. But listen, man, I got a son in law that's got a pacemaker and a fibrillator, and I got a brother that's got a pacemaker and a fibrillator. Sister Jackie's got a pacemaker and a fibrillator. Amen, but I know a God that can heal that heart. Amen, I know a God that can touch you. Amen, so remember her as you pray also. Amen. Anybody else? Listen, tell our live stream. We appreciate y'all. Listen, if you're in this area and you want to come and be with us Sunday and you ain't got a home church, come and be with us. Amen. You just want to come and visit and you live out of state and you want to drive, like Brother Darrell and Sister Francis did all the way from California, come by to see us, Sister Darlene. Amen. If you want to drive, amen. I always was told that the church alive is worth the drive, amen. If you want to uh, come and be with us on Pastor's Appreciation, you're more than welcome. We would love to have you. Amen. We love visitors. Amen. 11 a.m. Central Time. Amen. We, we would love to have you come be with us at 1499 Birchville Road, Glasgow, Kentucky. It's just a little storefront church, but the power of God's in the place. Amen. And uh, we just love to have each other. one of you. Anybody else, we want to tell her on TikTok, we appreciate you. We love you. All those that tuned in, Betsy, if she's on there, we, we, we're praying for you, girl. That God will just give you more of him. Amen. You'll just draw. He said, if you'll draw nine to me, I'll draw nine to you. Amen. So you want to get close to him, start drawing to him. Amen. And he'll draw to you. Amen. Also remember our our big old live. Amen. Uh, we, we appreciate y'all. We love y'all. You've been with us faithful. You have, you have really been with us and you're part of us. Amen. You might not think that, but you're part of our church. Amen. Big old live. TikTok. Facebook Live, YouTube, you're part of us. Amen. And we appreciate you. May God bless you. From He's Alive Community Church until Thursday night, may God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.